firstly, can we just start um, with kind of, uh, many are expecting the sentencing to be announced today, uh, yet Judge Masipa has said that this announcement will be in fact on the 6th of July. Uh, coming from a criminal lawyer, uh, you know, background, what is the reason for this? And is this a normal procedure? Yes, it's very much. Good morning, listeners. Yes, it's very much a normal procedure. Um, a lot of facts needs to be weighed and needs to be considered. And typically, when a judge assesses a matter and coming to what would be an appropriate sentence in the instance, various factors she needs to attach weight to it. Um, what we've had up to this stage was the so-called mitigation and extenuating circumstances. They typically divide it into three sections. The first one is the personal circumstances of the accused party. The third uh, or the second instance is that of the interest of the community. And the third, of course, is the nature of the crime. All of these play a role. All the factors that we've seen um, regarding the interests of the community, the interests of the public, the victim impact statements, all of these are put together and she then needs to make an assessment and accordingly finds a decision on that. That takes some um, analysing of what has been presented and of course to separate what is seen to be emotional at times and to apply the facts to the matter in coming to a just decision. Now let's start with the first day on Monday. Uh, the defence called on a psychologist, Professor Jonathan Skoltz. Uh, what are your thoughts on his evidence that was presented? Yes, in many instances in the normal course, if I may say that, what will happen with, with you may call in reports from various parties to assist with the sentencing procedure and to give you some insight to, to assist the court in that regard. Um, I did note that Apparently, he spent approximately 90 hours with Mr. Pretorius, which is rather a long time in that particular instance. He's also made some very startling conclusions. At the end of the day, the probative value of his assessment is in all probability an accurate snapshot of where Mr. Pretorius finds himself from a mental um, a viewpoint or a mental position at this stage. But then one must also take into consideration as being a long and, and, and a matter in the public interest. And of course, it's weighted everybody down. It does play some role. Um, but however, I don't believe that the judge will be swung um, totally by what has been submitted by him or insofar as any of the other aspects either that's been brought. It will be a balance of factors. And now in Skoltz's evidence presented, he in fact confirmed that Pistorius uh, for the first time admitted to intentionally firing into the door and the person behind it, where Pistorius has previously um, insisted that it was an accident or um, that it was self-defense. How could this evidence affect the sentencing? It is so that a element of remorse goes a long way towards tempering a judgment and influencing a sentence. Now, although Mr. Pretorius has stopped short of making any further admittances, so to speak, he has made a rather startling admittance by saying that it was intentional and perhaps the strategy, and I do not wish to speculate, but perhaps the strategy from the defense side is to show some form of a, not an admission, but a concession um, which they would like to be applied to its remorse, therefore that he recognized that what he's done was intentional and thereby in, uh, wrongful in the circumstances and that that recognition plays a role and I do believe that time will tell but it will come out in the judge's decision that she will most certainly refer to that. That will have some form of impact I believe on her decision. And in your opinion the fact that Oscar himself did not testify, do you believe that this is detrimental, uh, detrimental to the defence's case? No, I do not believe so. In circumstances such as these, and where you have testified in your matter already in defence, um, the question you've got to ask yourself from a defence point of view, um, what it is you want to achieve out of it. I think in the context of this matter, there would have been nothing much being achieved. Um, I think it would have turned again into uh, much more publicity. There would have been a lot more, perhaps, abusive uh, um, signature playing off inside the court. And as such, no, it, it doesn't count against him, not in my viewpoint.
And now Oscar took off his prosthesis and was made to walk around the court on his uh, stumps. Rue apparently wanted to show the athlete is vulnerable and not a strong, ambitious uh, man winning gold medals here. What impact does this have on the sentencing, if it has any? And also, what is Barry Rue trying to do here? Yes, I would. Uh, that particular incident, it, it was rather startling to myself, I, I must be honest. Um, it was a attempt, and one doesn't want to call it bordering on perhaps desperation, but yes, it is so to see Oscar walk around on his stumps is, I suppose, always been in the background of a lot of people's minds and how that is going to work in, 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 in jail, etc. But the reality of the matter is that we all know he functions with his prosthetic legs in this instance, and there's no reason why he will not have that in court. Uh, my apologies, in jail. So I do not believe at the end of the day that that really took the matter any further. As a matter of fact, I'll be as come out strongly to say that I found it rather distasteful to some extent and humiliating to Mr. Pretorius. And that, of course, has led to the counter from the state to wanting to bring in or having brought in and asking for the pictures to be released. I do believe that there was some form of a watershed by both parties' conduct at that stage, perhaps um, not taking cognizance of the dignity of the court procedures, but that, that remains my own view. Um, can we go into more detail regarding these graphic images that were um, published? Some media houses did show them, some refused not to. Uh, just unpack that a little bit more. Yes, I do believe um, when you deal with normal images or the graphic nature of images from crime scenes, they do affect you and they do affect you even if you've been so in the business for many years. Um, and therefore, for, for members of the public and such like to be perhaps exposed the first time to that clinical surroundings, it's very traumatic what you do view. I do believe we live in a society where we have access to media and everything nowadays is, is not such a holy cow as it used to be. However, we still deal with the main overriding issue here, and that is the dignity of the victim in this process, and of course the dignity of family members and their viewpoints um, to deal with that. Um, lots of media houses do have an attitude to not showing those things as a matter of course, and some do believe that it is in the public interest, um, it's difficult to, to put a position on there. I personally believe that perhaps from the sensitivity point of view, and purely on a graphic basis, that perhaps um, it is not advisable to, to show those to the public. Mm -hmm. Mr. Johan Kutsia, thank you so much for your time here on Morning Prime. That was Johan Kutsia, who is a criminal lawyer 